What's up guys, we are on site at one of our client's locations. We actually did this project several years ago, a complete uh, Unify install, but we want to give you a tour of what we did. Yeah, we got our routing, our switching, we're going to show you guys kind of the security setup too, and uh, we actually brought this place fiber internet. So uh, we're going to show you guys kind of what it takes to keep an airport hangar running. Let's get into it. Yeah. Welcome to the Network Closet. Now, before we get into all the equipment that we chose for this installation and why, I wanna give a shout out to our sponsor, us. If you guys need help with anything IT, whether it's a network project like this or managing your IT, we actually offer managed IT services starting at $25 a seat uh, with no long-term commitment. So check that out on our website. You can go to unifiedit.tech. Really would appreciate it. So let's talk about the rack. Now, this is a trip light rack. It's one of their uh, smart series racks. It's, the, it's an 18U. It's the standard depth, and this is an amazing rack for uh, installs where you may have one or two uh, low uh, depth servers, but you're primarily doing an IDF or an MDF install. And so it was a great selection for here. We love the trip light series. The only issue we've had with them has been some uh, particular uh, shippers and resellers not doing a good job with uh, shipping. But as far as the product goes itself, it's an awesome rack. And this one in particular is one of the swing out models. So let me just show you real quick. Latches on the side. You can change, uh, you can change whichever side uh, you want it to swing out on. In this case, we chose this way because it made more sense for the closet. And when you do this, you just want to make sure you have enough slack with the cabling. We actually don't have a whole lot here, which is why I can't open it all the way. Now, uh, whenever you do something like this, it's really important that we secure it properly. Now, in the past, I have been accused of wasting material, but I want to have a high margin of safety. And frankly, I want to sleep good at night. And so you can see here, we've used pretty thick Tapcoms. And this is really the only uh, type of, well, the only type of wall you can do this installation on is going to be some sort of concrete or brick. In this case, we have a solid poor wall, one inch fairing strips, and the drywall itself. And so we accounted for all of that, including our backing board, uh, when we went ahead and put in the Tapcoms. And we did, what is it, six, six on here? Uh, and so more than enough to really uh, anchor this board to the wall. And then we used uh, additional tap comms. Uh, excuse me, not, not tap comms. We used additional uh, really thick wood screws uh, to go into uh, the plywood itself. So this is a very secure mount, not sagging at all, uh, which again adds to my personal quality of sleep. As you all can see, we have plenty of rack space. This is an 18U and they also make this in a 12U. Now, you always want to plan for additional capacity whenever we're doing a deployment. Uh, we don't want to do too much because we can just add unnecessary costs onto our clients or to ourselves if it's our own project, but we do want to plan for growth. In this case, 18U was the right number as it allowed us to plan for additional future server capacity beyond the NVR. Our client was looking at doing a Synology or two. Uh, and we also wanted to plan for battery capacity. Uh, we are in Florida, so hurricanes are a real concern when it comes to network uh, disaster recovery. Now, if you've ever been through a hurricane, you should know power. Uh, if it goes out for a day or two, that's pretty good, uh, if, but it very often can go out for weeks at a time. And so the fact that we have a fiber internet connection, that means that if we're able to get power to this rack during a storm, it's very likely that we're going to continue to have internet functionality, uh, you know, even in the middle of, of the hurricane. So. Uh, that's why we wanted to have the additional capacity. Now technology actually did get ahead of us and so if we wanted to plan for even more growth beyond the several hours these two APCs give us, we probably would do a Tesla Powerwall or something that is wall mountable such as, such as that. Um, and so let's start at the top of the rack and work our way down. At the very top we are using uh, the Cable Matters shielded patch panels. These are their Cat 6A patch panels. Now we actually moved away from Cable Matters and started using more vertical cable. Nothing against Cable Matters, we just like the vertical cable product better. And the big reason for that is a small reason, but it's a big deal when you're installing, and that's that all of the white twisted pair wires inside of a Cable Matters cable are just white. They're not white and orange, white and green, white and blue, they're just white, which makes it really challenging. And on this particular install, which is all Cable Matters cables, uh, we had a lot that we had to re-terminate just because we made a mistake with misidentifying the colors of wires because they weren't colored. And so uh, we switched to vertical, but vertical actually makes a very similar patch panel to this one. And if you guys have watched some of our other videos, you'll notice that most of the patch panels we do are what we call loaded patch panels. We can put keystones in them. 
Uh, this one is not. It's more of a traditional patch panel, although the cables do punch down uh, a little bit differently than like your standard block panels. Uh, it is a little bit more affordable to do this when you're doing a shielded install. Keystones that are shielded typically run about $6 a piece, whereas this patch panel was $78 for the entire panel, and so it breaks out to be significantly cheaper than getting a standard keystone patch panel and filling it with shielded keystones. With that, one of the nice things about this facility is that we ran the entire place with CAT 6A shielded cable, and so there is more than enough room for bandwidth expansion, um, but in general, we prefer keystone patch panels. When you're going the shielded route, we tend to like these vertical cable, or excuse me, these cable matters patch panel. And it's actually, I think Vertical has one, they just are labeled differently, that they're probably made by the same factory. Um, right below, in between there, we have a Unify 48 Pro PoE switch. Uh, this is actually right when those switches came out. It's been great, haven't had any issues with it. It's been uh, rock solid. And one thing you will notice is we attempted to keep uh, as many as we could of the PoE++ ports free. Excuse me, PoE++ plus plus PoE++ plus plus ports free. And the reason for that is we wanted to reserve those for door access control in the event we added those in the future. Still got plenty of fiber connectivity. Again, the thought there is servers. Cool thing about this switch is in an install like this, we're not using all of those for uh, connecting to other switches. And so we're able to plug servers directly into those ports, uh, which would make it really awesome for having a 10 gig uh, connection to a potential future server. Uh, coming down here, uh, we have our, our blanking panels. Again, just an added touch, really not required for airflow on such a small install, but it looks a lot cleaner and it just speaks to the attention to detail uh, when you do something like that. Uh, we're using an NVR Pro 4. We actually started out with the, an older version of the NVR and, and later upgraded. And the main reason for that is we have too many cameras here with the 4K cameras and just the count. Uh, a UDM Pro could just barely kind of do it, but you're gonna run into issues. And so uh, when it comes to the Ubiquiti gear, uh, it really is great gear. I mean, every once in a while we have gotten a dud, uh, particularly with the NVRs, but they've gotten a lot better recently with the QC. I think a lot of that was related to the pandemic and just manufacturing challenges. But the reality is if you spec it correctly and go a few under what they say on their website, you're gonna uh, be having a rock solid solution. Does the UDM Pro say it can support, what is it, like 20 cameras? Can it, in ideal circumstances perhaps, but in general, if you're going above, in my opinion, six cameras, somewhere around there, get an NVR. Uh, and in this particular install, with the number of 4Ks, it's really required. So, uh, and this is obviously the head of our network, as well as the uh, server running the network application for administering the network, which only has two access points. So it's a really a small network in terms of device count. Uh, but it is also a network that is capable of fast speeds. And with that, let's talk about the internet we have coming in here. We have a GPON connection from CenturyLink, now Lumen, and uh, this was an awesome upgrade. Now the reality is a project like this, it has very few technical components or network components. And we have our UDM Pro, our Switch, our UNVR, and only two access points. But the majority of planning and attention to detail on a project such as this really comes in the deployment stage, particularly coordinating with contractors, thinking about uh, rack and server placement, making sure we have sufficient cooling, the fact that we're gonna be in a closet, uh, coordinating with other trades to make sure that we're not in their way and they're not gonna be in our way when we have to punch through the wall. Uh, there's a lot of electrical going on. We have, we have a like 400 amp service coming in here. And so there's a lot of coordination that needs to happen in planning. Uh, not to mention making sure all this fits within the client's budget. And so uh, whenever you do projects like these, if whether you are an integrator yourself or you're someone who's doing a DIY project, I wanna encourage you in that, uh, you know, the, the networking side of things is, is the fun part. And, it, and with Unify, really, if you sit down for a couple hours, even if you have no networking experience, you're going to learn how to configure Unify. And if you haven't already, check out our video. We actually do a full walkthrough of how uh, we configure it. Uh, our, my good buddy Matthew talks about um, kind of some best practices he takes from larger scale networks and applies them to Unify. Uh, we'll put that video down in the comments. One last thing I wanted to show you guys before we pass it off to Matt to talk about cameras is the neat patch. These neat patches are really awesome because not only do they make our racks look really clean, but they actually help us manage access cables. So we don't actually have to cut every cable to length, uh, which is particularly hard to do with the fiber. Uh, we can put our access cables in here. And so it's not really just about making the rack look clean, although it certainly does that, it's also about making the rack functional for our service. So with that, let's pass it off to Matt. He's gonna to talk to you guys about, about some of the cameras we chose for this install and why. 
So let's talk about the cameras. Now for this entire facility, we're using G4 Pros or domes, and then behind me is a weird exception, we're actually using a G3 to capture this gate right here for the ramp. Now the ramp side cameras are, as you just saw outside, they're the 4Ks or the Pros, and then for inside the hangar, we're using conduit and all of the G4s inside of there. And we have to use conduit because it is uh, a hangar. We don't really want to have any exposed wiring. We want to make sure it's all tidy. That way it doesn't get any damage and it's all sealed up properly. And for the doors, we're using the domes to make sure we capture everyone who comes inside and outside or at all the entrances and exits. Well, thank you for making it to the end of the video. We hope you guys enjoyed this content and we are working on bringing more of it your way. If you need IT consulting, uh, we'd love to connect with you. Whether you're doing a server project or Unify or a phone system, device management, or really anything IT or tech, if we can't help you, I would love to connect with you and refer you to someone else in the industry who can. And maybe you yourself don't need IT, but you know someone who does, then you should check out our referral program. You can head on over to unifiedit.tech referral, and there you can refer someone you know who needs services, and you can actually make up to $5,000 per referral. So it's a great program. Um, with that, we hope you guys enjoyed this content. Please do click that like button. It really helps us grow our channel and get this content out to more people. And with that, we will catch you guys in the next one. There's no way they're going to be able to hear us over that. <laughs> oh my god. All right. All right, take it again. Here we go. Oh, let it get in the distance.